Okay, hello everybody. This is Bob Coppage, also with Michelle Mobla. Hello. Yay. Mm -hmm. And this is actually, strangely enough, our 16th webinar wow. on Office. I know it is that exciting. <laughs> uh, and this time we're going to be dealing with Microsoft Access, creating and working with data and tables. And Access is one of those programs that personifies my annoyance with what Microsoft calls things. <laughs> Because there's nothing that makes more sense than saying you have to access data with access so you can use access to work with data. Anyway, <laughs> so hopefully you'll learn more than that. Uh, in any case, again, uh, audio is on uh, your computer only. We don't have a phone link yet. We actually may have that starting next month. We're talking to a third party, and we may actually start doing that, uh, which actually will help with uh, audio issues that we have with some folks. And uh, this will be up on YouTube soon after. Uh, and as we've pointed out before, we've also got two new services from Simplex IT, Simplex DBA, which works with corporate data, as well as Simplex PM, which works with uh, project management. So take advantage of those. And we also have webinars along those lines. And this shows our schedule for the next month. Each month now, we're up to four events that you can uh, all four of them are accessible online and live, and one of them we actually give you a free lunch, uh, the office one, which you're partaking here, and we also have the luncheon hour, which is uh, next Wednesday. That's going to be our second look at Windows 10. There's been some significant upgrades to that, including a pre-release of Office 2016. That's not to be confused with the Mac version of Office 2016, which is also out in preview, and just some general stuff with Microsoft, what they're doing with Link, or excuse me, Skype for Business, and some of the other things that are going on. Uh, and then we also have our project management webinar on scheduling best practices. And then we've got uh, March 24th. Actually, I think that topic may be changing. I think that's actually uh, performing a corporate uh, data review. And uh, then next month uh, for the office is going to be uh, moving forward with access and getting answers from your access database, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, as we've also said before, we do have some offerings for getting some specialized training uh, with Michelle. And you pick the topics and uh, the version and the like. And uh, we think it's a great opportunity to do some very focused training. So, and we will be giving out, just like we did at all of our events now, uh, we will be giving out, courtesy of Microsoft, a free copy of Office Professional 2013 to one attendee. And I leave that to Michelle to figure out whether it be a question or just somebody she likes or whatever. <laughs> but uh, she'll figure that out, and we'll get that uh, to you by email and all that kind of fun silliness. And I think that is all I got. So, Michelle, if you want to take it Okay, away. I will. Thank you very much. Okay, so welcome to the Access Database um, webinar, Getting Started with Access, so how to design your database, how to um, go ahead and work with it, set it up, get it ready to create tables in Access. Of course, Access is a complicated program, and <clears throat> it's really hard to try to cover this in one hour. So the next database <coughs> webinar, excuse me, We'll talk about queries. It will move fast because there's a lot of information to cover. Remember, it'll be posted on YouTube, so if you want to watch it at your own pace and take notes, feel free. But this is just to kind of, you know, get you started with access. So let's begin. All right, so um, when you're working with access, there are four major parts to working with the database program. The first is creating tables, and that's what we're going to be doing today, and that's where you store all your data. So you create your fields, you put your information in, you set it up, and then you have your data stored in your tables. Your forms are a way of, you can create forms to, to have people enter data into the table, whether it's you or whether it's someone else. You can create queries, which actually ask questions to extract the information that you need. And then finally, you can print that information for you by creating what are called reports. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that we are XYZ company. And as a company, we have customers and we sell products. So what we want to do is we want to create a database. So what we have to think about is what kind of tables do we want in that database? And so if I have customers, I'm going to create a customer table. 
And uh, if I have sales reps, I'm going to create a sales rep table. I'm going to create a table for products. The more you break down your categories, the better it is. Now, sometimes you can get away and access with just one table. If you just have limited amount of information, you just need a table, one table's fine, then you don't have to worry about relationships. But if you have lots of data, you know, there is a limit in, in a table on how much how many fields you can have and two fifty five and so therefore you have to, you know, kind of break it down. So uh, let's say I'm going to create a customer table, sales rep, etc. So those are the tables that I want to create. Now I have to take it a step further and break down those tables. So I'm going to take the customer table and we're going to break it down. Now again, I am going to show you how to create these in Access. I'm just kind of talking about the design of it first. So in that table, you might have a field for Mr., Ms., Mrs. If you're a hospital, maybe you have a doctor table, physician table, a patient table. So, you know, you want to put those fields in. The other reason you want to break down your fields as, as much as possible is if you're doing a mail merge and you want to say, dear Mr. Smith, so therefore, you break it down. So then I put customer first name, and why am I putting you know CUST in front of it? Some fields are going to be replicated in other tables. So for instance, I have the sales rep table. Therefore, the sales rep is going to have a name field. So if I wanted to print a report or a query saying, show me sales rep and all their customers, I need to distinguish between the customer name and the sales rep name. So that's why I put customer in front of the field names that may be, you know, just to kind of make it easy for myself. And then breaking it down by first name, last name allows me to search better, allows me to sort in a table, so it helps to break it down, which they call normalizing your data. Then I have address, field, city, state, zip, phone. And then the most important field in your table is your ID field, or the field that is actually going to link, um, that, is, that is unique to that record. So every customer is going to have like an account number, or if it was a patient table, they would have a patient record number or um, and a security number, something that is unique to that record. This field can't be used, again, if someone has the number one, then you someone else cannot have the number one. It is unique to that record. So that is your unique identifier in your table, and that unique identifier can also be used in other tables to, you, to link those tables together, and you'll see that as we go. So now I took the sales rep table. Now I broke that down. And you can see that I have, you know, the rep ID. That's going to be the employee number. That's for the employee, their last name, their first name. And later, I may even create the full name in, in a um, column like the last and first name because I may want to use that as a drop down in the customer table later just to identify what sales rep has which customer. Now, I can also combine those fields in a query and use the lookup from a query, but that's a whole nother story. So then I've got the rep title, the department, the salary, again, email, phone, name, those are fields that could be repeated, so I put the word rep in front of them. So what I've, I have here, as you can see, is I have a customer table with the fields, I have an employee table or sales rep table with this, and then I have a product table. And what I did here in the customer table is I put the employee ID, the key field from this table into here so that when I'm going through the table, I can create a lookup and say, okay, this is the sales rep for this, this customer, and I already have the sales rep um, names in the sales rep table. What that ends up doing is linking the customer table to the employee table. It creates a one-to-many relationship, meaning this number can only appear once in this table, but can appear many times in here because that employee may have multiple customers. Then these two are linked. Then in the customer table, I may have a product ID field. I could have a couple of them, and I want to know what product they purchased. Well, I have a product table, so I'm going to pull the name from here. Then I, then I link these two tables together, the customer and the product table. 
And what happens then, I'm starting to create links between these tables. So sometimes, too, what you end up with are junction joins, meaning they have indirect links. So if I'm linking the employees table to customers and the products table to customers, then I get an indirect link between employees and products. So all three are, are linked. And if I wanted to do a query to question, you know, find information about those fields from those three tables, I could do that. So sometimes while you're working with the links and the joins, you'll get um, indirect joins also. Then, so access is a relational database, therefore linking your tables is critical. So if you're going to have multiple tables, you have to think about linking them. And also, it's about it, if you design your database well, it's functional. It's a Microsoft product, so you, you know you want it to work with your other programs and be able to pull the information that you need. So now let's look at the actual program itself. And as I said, there's a lot to this. So you know, if down the road you want more training and access, we could come out and do that, or we can do a web to help you out or we could, you know, online, whatever you need. But, you know, like I said, usually when I teach a access class, it's usually a two-day class because we couple cover tables, queries, forms, and reports. So all four objects. All right. So that's kind of like thinking about your database, designing it, putting it together. Sometimes someone else has put it together for you. But if you're trying to create something from scratch, Thinking about how you put it together first, you can take a piece of paper, write all your fields down, take another piece of paper for your other table, write all the fields down, look at those tables, how am I going to link them, maybe put them in a table, something to kind of think about it before you start creating it. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of, I'm having trouble with my mouse. Um, and now I have a database. I'm going to show you how to create one from scratch, but first I want to open one that I've already created. Um, a couple things. Sometimes you will get the, based on the um, macros, when you open up databases or create them based on the virus protection in your computer, you might get the security warning um, so you can hit enable content and then it tells it that that database is okay. You can also go to file. You can go to options. You can go to the Trust Center and go to Trust Center settings. And then you can say, you know, never show information about block content if you don't want to, or say enable Trust Center logging so that it knows it's okay. So every time you open them up, you won't, you don't get that enable content button that pops up all the time. So if you're comfortable and you know that the databases that you're working with are fine, you can enable the Trust Center so that um, it doesn't come up every time you open up a database. But I don't want to turn it off on this machine, so I'm just going to hit cancel. And over here on the left in the navigation pane, you'll notice I have some tables. And then there's a little drop down arrow to the right of it. And I can actually view the different parts of my database. So I have some queries in here. I have some forms. I have a report. And then if I go to all access objects, it'll group everything together. So it's got all the tables together, all the queries together, the forms, and the reports. Another way to view this, which is kind of interesting, is to click on the drop down arrow go to tables and related views. And what this does is it'll show you your tables and anything that you built from that table will be listed underneath. So for instance, if you created some queries, these two queries used fields from the employee table. Then I have a form and I can tell because of the little icon here, the double is a query, this is a form, this is a report, this is a table. So now I've got four, three objects created from this table nothing from the orders table, but from the customer table, I created an employee customer query and I created a customer report. So basically, it kind of it tells you any other um, objects that you created in Access that are related to that particular table. So that's another way to view it. Um, and if you click on the little, you know, collapse and expand buttons, you just want to see a certain table um, and it's objects, you can. I'm going to go back to the object type, 
and I'm going to have it so that it shows me the tables, the queries, the forms, and the reports. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the customer table by double clicking on it, the employee table by double clicking on it, the employee query, the form, and the report. Now, the thing about this is you'll notice I have tabs at the top that allow me to navigate between the different tables, the query, the form, the report, which is nice. But when you first open Access, it may not come up in tabs because it's actually defaulted to a different view. So to, to set it so that it comes up in tabs, go to File, go to Options, go to um, data, Current Database, and change the document window options to tab documents. Check the display document tabs box because the uh, default is overlapping windows. Hit OK and then it'll have you shut the database down and then reopen it so that you can see the tabs. And then you can right click, -click on the tabs, you can close that object if you want, you can um, hit close all and close them all at once and then there, it's easier to work with when you have those little tabs going across. Now, um, this is also, this is 2013, but this is the same in 10. Uh, 7, I think it's the same. It's been a while since I've seen 7. It's going to be very similar because of the ribbons and stuff, but there's some features in 7 I know that are, are, are not there, like a calculated control and certain things like that. So, um, but 10 I know for sure is some, is, almost identical to 13 and then there's just a few changes. All right, so I'm going to right now go to close this database and I'm going to go to File, New. So when you go to File, New, this is where you get started creating your database. And so they have some templates here that if you, you know, just don't know where to begin, you could kind of download some of these templates and help you create your database. But we're going to create it from scratch, so we're going to do the blank desktop database. Um, that would be if you want to save it, you know, on an S drive or a P drive, your company drive, you still can use that. Or the custom web app, if you use this one, if you're going to upload it to SharePoint or you're going to do it like um, you want to create it, you would put the URL address in there. And then this one would be a database where you're going to share it and have other people have access to it. You would want to use the custom web app um, one to create your database from. But in the class today, we're going to use the blank data, um, desktop database. I'm going to call this webcast database. That's the name. So when you get this screen, don't just hit the create button right away. So, you know, a lot of people just hit create, but they forget to name it and they forget to tell it where they want to store it. So if I hit the open button and to tell it where I want to store this database, the little folder, it's going to come up eventually. And I'm going to put it on the desktop for now, and I'm going to hit OK. So now I know the name of it, where I'm putting it, where I'm going to store it, and then I hit my Create button. When I hit the Create button, what this access does is it automatically gives you a table in your database. It gives you a key field, which, you know, I'm going to change. You can design the database this way. I don't recommend it. I like to work in design view. But if you decide to create your database this way, you can choose the data type here, like if it's short text and if it's, you know, first name. And then here, you know, you could go back and say if it's a number or currency, and I'll talk about that more in design view. And then you can also create them that way. Um, and then I'm just going to then close it, and when I close it, it's going to say, do you want to save changes? And if I say yes, I'm going to go ahead and just call it customers and hit OK. And then I would go from there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, close this one, and I'm going to open back this class database that I had. Actually, that's not the one I want. I want to close that one. And I want to open, here it is. OK, come on. The 
this one. All right, again, here's that enable content. Because I'm opening these on a new computer today, a different computer than when I worked, created them, that's why this is coming up. And remember, I didn't um, turn on the uh, trust the site, um, enable the trust center to come on automatically, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this. Okay, um, I'm noticing there's some questions coming up, and I'm gonna answer those at the end of the session. So, um, because I'm going to touch, show you how to link the tables, and then we're going to go ahead and um, cover that at the end, because I'm trying, I need to get through the topics today. So, I have a um, table that I created in this database that kind of got started in this one. And so, what I'm going to do is, when you create your database and you get it started, and now you want to do another table, so we've got a customer table, we've got the fields, the account number, last name, address, and there's two types of views. There is the data sheet view, which is the view where you enter the data, and then there's the design view, which is the view that you're in when you want to create your column or your fields. So you can see in this particular um, table, I've created my fields. So I'm going to go um and close this and then i'm going to create a new table i'm already in my database i've named the database xyz company i created my first table and now i want to do another table and if you hit the best button to hit for that would be table design because you want to go right into design view so I'm going to click on that, and then it's going to take me right into design view. So I'm going to type my first field. So my first field is rep ID, and that is going to be my field. You can say, you know, sales employee number, whatever you want to call it, but this is going to be the field that is going to be my key field. So I'm going to tab over to, and then the data type. And the data types, if you notice, when you click on them, there's what type of data is going to go in that column? Is it going to be text? Short text would be 255 characters. That's the max. That would be like name, address. When you want to mix numbers and letters, you want to use short text. Long text is what they used to call memo. I don't know why they changed the name. So if you're in 10, it's memo. Now it's long text. Number, date, time would be whether it's a date or time. Currency. Um, you're going to be um, the number, the date, time, the currency, auto number, automatically letting it number for you, yes, no, OLE object, hyperlink, uh, attachment. We're going to go through some of these. Also, if you hit your F1 when you're in the data type column, and F1 is great to use whenever you're in any of the columns or field settings that you want to do. You hit data type. And then you'll notice that it lists what those different data types are. So it explains the like memo you would use for 63,990. I don't know. They change this number every time. It used to be 64,000. Um, but you'll notice that memo would be like if you're taking notes and you want to put notes in, that's what you would do. So and then here in the description, I'm going to put um, employee account number. Um, so this is something that's optional. You don't have to do it, and I'll show you where that is in a little bit. Now I'm going to put rep um, name. Now again, I'm putting the name. I'm going to put the full name in here because I'm going to use that field. Um, I'm going to use that as my drop down to link this to my customer table that I have created. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm also not using spaces in my field names. And the reason I'm not using spaces is because um, not spaces won't allow you to use space. But if I'm if I'm using these fields for calculations or I'm using them for <coughs> excuse me, or if I'm using them to concatenate or combine fields together to make a nice looking report, if you don't use spaces, Access will put brackets around the field names for you. But if you use spaces, you're going to have to always type out the brackets. So, um, and 
you can use certain symbols like a dash or a you know underscore and but um, you can't use certain symbols like periods and things like that and the other thing is when we talk about properties I'm going to talk about captions so you know using captions to help with those fields so this one I'm going to make short text then I'm going to put rep title I'm going to make that short text and rep department and that's going to be short text then rep hire date just showing you how I'm creating that's going to be date time rep salary is going to be currency and then um, rep email we're going to do as a hyperlink and that was the other thing with these the hyperlink I would use for email web addresses they have a new one called attachment which is cool I'll show you in the customer table where you can attach um, Excel multiple attachments like Excel workbooks you can do Word documents let's say you have invoices for your customers or you have um, things like that so that's kind of cool and the new one is you can do a calculation in a table also so the only object I would use if you want to insert a picture maybe a picture of the employee or a picture of your product though you would not see the graphic in the table you'd have to create a form for that so I'm going to do one more rep phone and make that um, I'm going to make that number for now actually I'm going to make it short text for now but if you're going to use your dashes and you want to do an input mask I'm going to do rep um, social and just make that number okay so I'm creating my fields in my table and so I need to say okay which field is going to be my key field which field is am I making the key that's unique to that record well that's going to be the rep ID field so in access I need to select the field and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the um, primary key button and now I've told access this is my key field you see the little key next to it and if you have to change it for any reason just click on the key to take it off but click on the key again it'll make it a required field meaning that they can't leave it blank and um, you cannot duplicate that field because that is the field that's going to identify that record now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into data sheet view so I'm going to right click and go to data sheet view that button is right here um, you can add it to your quick access toolbar if you want you know that little toolbar up here that you can customize um, you can access it on the home ribbon and it's on the design ribbon or because I'm using the tabs I can just right click on the tab and go to um, data sheet view I have created this so it's asking me to save it so I say yes and then I forgot to name it so I'm just going to call it um, sales rep if I was a developer they'd say put TBL in front of it um, or after it so that they know it's a table um, if they also get sometimes so far as to go you know str for text num for number because when they're working in code they need to see whether you know the field because it could be you know other places like in a query or something whether that's text or whether it's a table or whether it's a form or whatever and you know basically access knows all of this for the regular user so you don't have to do that but if you know you see it in other databases at least you'll know why you will see those extensions after the field names or the table names etc in this case I'm not going to do that so I'm going to go back to data sheet view save it call it sales rep and it's a table it knows it's a table now that I have this set up I can you know type in my number if I want I can type the name Mary she's a um, sales rep and then I'm gonna put some property settings in here so you can see like drop downs and defaults and that I did the date time so now I get the little calendar that I can click on to choose when that person was hired I can put um, how much they're making it's set to currency so it has the dollar signs the email so I can put Smith M at X you know XYZ company so when I click on that 
if I open the table or form and click on it, it actually opens up your email program if you're using Outlook. Some people are still using Lotus Notes. Click on it, opens up a new email message with their email already there. So you can send them a message while you're there. You can put in the phone number. Now, I didn't do the input mask yet. So, you know, that's something that um, I'm going to show you where it'll put in the dashes for me. And then for the same with the um, social security number. So now I can go through and add one more just so I have something for my lookup later. And I want to leave some of these blank if I want to. I can, I, you know, I can come back to them later if I have to do that. So, um, but Richards J at xyz.com. I'm going to leave the phone number and the social uh, empty. Now, I'm going to close this table. And when I close it, you're going to see it didn't ask me to save changes. Once you enter a record and move to the next row, that record is automatically saved in your table. So when you're entering the data in the table and you move to the next row, it's saved. So you don't have to worry about that. The only time it's going to ask you to save changes is when you change the column size or, the, or something with the design of the table, but not when you're entering data. Now, so I've got a customer table with fields. I have a sales rep table with fields. And so now I'm going to go into design view of the sales rep table and talk more about property settings, this box down here, down below. So as you can see, I have this, um, if I click on the fields below, the properties for those fields are down here below. So for instance, if I click on rep name, rep name, I said it's a good idea not to put spaces in your field names, but you want them to look nice. So you put a caption. So if you put a caption in here, and captions, you can use spaces. So I'm going to say sales rep name, and then I'm going to click here, and I'm going to say um, rep title. Just put a few in here. Rep department. Now. The purpose of a caption is that it will replace the field name in the column heading when you do a form and when you do a report. So if I go to the data sheet view, and anytime I make a change in design view, I have to save it. You'll notice that now, if you look up here at the top, if I size my columns, you can see that it's using that caption as the field name. So therefore, um, you know, it's making it look nice. So it's replacing the actual field name for the caption, but the field name still doesn't have the spaces. So, you know, when I'm doing things like formulas and stuff like that, it's already set up for me. Now, when I go back into design view, um, I'm not going to do captions for every one of those. But now, let's say that um, for hire date, I wanted to do, um, if you type it in, if you notice when you were here and you had the little calendar and data sheet view for hire date, but if you started to type it, you wouldn't get the slashes or the dashes in there. So if you wanted to put those in there, those symbols, then you can use, um, I have to hit escape twice because I was in um, edit mode then you can do what's called an input mask. And an input mask can only be used with date time fields or text fields. So if I do the date here and I go to the little dots here and I click yes and I pick, um, now remember you've got time and date, so make sure you pick date and not time. And then I'll pick short date, hit next. Um, placeholder character, that's like if I click there I see the underscore. I like to use symbols because then it's easier to see where the blanks are, so it's better to fill it out, especially if someone else is filling out this information. Hit Next and hit Finish. Now, if I go back into Data Sheet View, one of the things you will notice, though, you give up some things when you work with the date input math. You give up the little calendar that was on the right, 
And basically now you also have to fill out O2, you have to fill out, you know, O3, and you have to fill out the whole year. You can't just type 13 and then it puts 2013 in it. So when you use the input mask for a date, um, you just have to be careful because it depends on what you want. If you like the little calendar, don't use the input mask. If you want it to put the slashes and dashes in for you, depending on what format you pick, then use the input mask. All right, so I'm going to go back into design view. Um, same with um, the phone number. You want to use the input mask for that. Go down here to input mask. Click on the button with the three dots to go to the input mask wizard. Um, it has the phone number. Hit next. And then, you know, what symbol you want to use for, this, for that. You see it puts the parentheses and the dash in and then finish with that. Now, Social Security, if I go down here to input mask and I hit this, and I, I get an error because it was set to number. And because you're using the dashes, you have to change the data type to text. So I'm going to go back here and change it to short text, go back to input mask, and then use the um, Social Security one, and then hit finish. So you can see how those, when I go in and enter the record, you'll see how that works. Then I'm going to add a field and I'm going to add it after um, email. So I'm going to go here and up here I'm going to hit insert row. So I can insert a new field in here and I'm going to call it bonus. And I'm going to make it a calculated control. And so now when I hit enter, it brings up the expression builder window where I can choose. I want to do a bonus. It's going to be salary times 5%. So I have that salary field here. So I'm going to double click on it. Notice it put the brackets around the field name. Why? Because I didn't use spaces. That's what I'm talking about. Then times 0 0.05. So when I hit OK, and it's going to go in and I go into data sheet view, it's going to calculate that for me. So I'm going to go to data sheet view. I'm going to add a new record by hitting the new button. I'm going to type in the employee number. Now, you know what, with that, I forgot to show you. I'm going to go back into design view. And with that one, when I'm doing that input mask, you can create your own custom number. So if I go to edit list, and that brings up, you know, phone number, social security, there's a new button, little button here with an asterisk that if I hit new, I can say that this is the employee number. And the input mask is going to be two digits, a dash, three digits. That's maybe you have a custom number for like a product code or whatever. And then what place number do I want? You know, that's the symbol. I'll do a at sign. So that's going to symbolize the, um, the digits. I'm going to hit close. So I have to put sample in there so it sees it. And hit close and then finish. Okay, so now when I go into um, data sheet view, yeah, of course those aren't set up that way because, what did I use? Oh, hold on here. here. Did I, you know why? I didn't pick the employee number, I picked the, the phone number. <laughs> All right, here we go. So now when I go back into data sheet view, all right, so now when I go here, I can type in, see I didn't have enough numbers. It does change the data above it, so be careful when you do this. When you're working with property settings, you really want to play with them before you get your data entered because if you do that, you know, you're going to do things like cut, thing, cut data off and stuff like that, so be careful. So I'll put Harris, John, Joe, let's say Joe because we already have a John. Um, he's a sales rep. I didn't do the... Um, all right, I'm going to hit escape again because there were some other fields that I missed and I'm, I'm not looking at my notes right now, so I'm kind of like going as I go here. So let's say for title, I'm going to put a default value, sales rep. And then for department, I wanted to do a lookup. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to do a lookup wizard where I'm going to type in my own values, meaning I want to create my own department drop-down. So I hit next, 
and then I'm going to do sales north tab sales south tab if I hit enter it'll take me to the next window east and sales west and that's my going to be my drop down so now I'm going to go back in to data sheet view okay now we've got some more property settings hit the new button start typing the employee number the employee name there's the default now if this person was a manager you could override the default then I get the drop down if I hit F4 it'll bring down the list so that I can use the arrow key to choose the one I want and hit enter or the other thing that happens too is you, you start typing and it'll come up with the um, list the items that are in your list so it does do the autocomplete if you use a, the drop down list to create a um, you know little drop down for you there's the dates so you can see that I have to type the dates now so I can't just you know use the calendar I have the currency in there so I can you know create their salary whoops too many zeros um, there's the bonus now the bonus field is not um, formatted I'm gonna have to go back and do that when I'm done with this so I'm gonna do Harris J at xyz.com the phone number 216-444-1212 input mask input mask for Social Security notice it's putting in the dashes bingo I have it all set up for myself if I go back into design view um, that bonus field was not formatted so if I click on it and go down here to format I can choose currency so that when I go back into data sheet view now it's formatted for me so it's taking this and it's giving me 5% of that so those are the property settings for this field I'm going to go to the I'm going to actually close this because I'm going to go to the customer table in design view and basically with the properties with this is I could go down and put captions for the field names um, I could create an input mask for the phone number you can see down here for phone number I can put a, um, an input mask down here and do that little three dots to go to the input mask wizard I can do a default for state so for state I can make this two and then I can change the default value to OH be careful when you change these field sizes if you already have customers in there what's going to happen is when I go into data sheet view it tells you some data may be lost in this case I lucked out because the state was Ohio so it was OH but if I had Pennsylvania in here it would have been PE so you know when you cut the the field size down and you already have data in your database your table it's going to cut that data out so just be careful you want to kind of do all of this before you get the data entered into um, your table now if I hit go back into my design view I have a customer sales rep field here I did notes I did memo new customer yes no attachments and I'm gonna show you that when we enter the record one of the fields I added was the sales rep field so this could say rep ID it doesn't have to be the same name as the field in here but it has to be the same data type so it has to be text text or it has to be number number so I'm gonna create a lookup because I want to pull the sales rep responsible for this customer this is what's going to link the tables together I'm going to go to the lookup wizard I'm going to look up the fields from another table hit next that's the link that the field that I'm linking that I want the values to come from is the sales rep table so I select that table hit next the name remember I put the full name in the call in that field so that when I do the lookup it's going to show me last name first name so I'm going to send that field to the right when I hit next and I say I want to sort by name if I go back it pulled the ID field over even though um, I didn't do it so the key came over automatically it's going to use that key to link to the customer table so when I hit next next 
There's my drop down. It's going to hide the key field, but it's going to show me the names in the drop down. So when I hit next, and then if you want to protect the history of your data so that someone can't go into the sales rep table and delete that sales rep from that table, then you can um, enable data integrity. Um, and so you can restrict the deleting if you don't care that they get deleted, but you want it to delete in other tables. It, it gets complicated, but you have to run a delete query and all of that. So that would be something else. Other than that, you can leave it blank. It'll still link them together. So I'm going to hit finish. And then it says you must save it before relationships can be created. And then I'm going to go into um, data sheet view and, and show you. And then I'll show you where the relationship is. So it created a relationship now between the customer and the sales rep table. And if I closed and saved this, okay, and went to database tools and went to relationships, this is where the link is now. So what it did is it, it linked the rep ID from here to the sales rep in here. And I've got a link between those two. If you didn't have this, if you didn't have this link, let's say, you know, you didn't have it and you had to manually do it, you would just click here and you would drag it to this field here and then hit create and it would create the link between those two tables. So um, now when I open up the customer table and I want to add a new customer, all right, I'm going to add their account number. His first name is George. Last name is Simpson. Um, 45 East Street, Columbus. Notice I have a default, Ohio. So if you know that most of your customers are in Ohio, you create a default. I've got um, zip code, I've got phone number, I've got email, now the attachment button, this is kind of cool, you double click on it, you can hit add, And then you can go in and add an, any attachment, PowerPoint presentation that you're going to give to the customer, an invoice that you're, you have for them, um, patient billing, a Word document, letters that you may have sent to them. You can actually add multiple. What's nice about this is that you can add multiple attachments. Every time you add one, you just click on... Um, the attachment and hit, and then when you hit OK, it'll tell you how many attachments you have. You double click on it, you select the attachment, and you hit open. That is a really nice addition to uh, the access tables. Okay, they're a new customer. Yes, check yes, uncheck no. Um, notes, you can put notes in here. The problem with notes in a table is you you can't see all of it, you can't make it possibly, there's no wrap text in the table, so you can't do that. So the best thing for this would be a form, which I'll show you in a minute. So um, need to call um, George tomorrow. The sales rep is, this is coming from the sales rep table. So now I can choose which sales rep is responsible for which customer because I've got this join between these two tables and that lookup created that drop down list join between the customer and the sales rep table. So now I'm linking the two tables together. And so therefore I have, now I can just keep going. So if I close this, then I automatically have my two tables that I created. Now, the other thing is, real quick, I'm going to select the customer table, go to the Create ribbon, because Create is where you go to create queries and forms and reports, and I'm going to hit the Form button just to create a quick form based off of this table that I had. And here, if you notice, I have my fields, and I have whether they're a new customer, I can see the notes better, and I get the drop-down. So the property settings that you see um, 
when you're in form view is that you can see, I was in design view, but you can see now, and then I can go in and I can add a new record, and everything that I do here is going to go into the table that I created. So, you know, if I type Susan, if I type her last name is, you know, um, I'm running out of names here. Uh, address is 56 uh, South Street, uh, Cleveland, Ohio, zip, blah, 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 blah. And then their phone number. There's the input mask, so you can see that um, it works in the form. Their email. The documents. If I wanted to um, insert those, I would just right-click and go to Manage Documents, and then I can add them from here. Whether they're a new customer, um, customer notes, you can see your notes. And then again, you've got the sales rep link, because you can pick the name from the drop-down, and then I can tab to the next record. Now, if I close this, and I forgot to call this, it's going to be my customer form. And I open up my customers, um, there's my new employee so or customer that I added. So you can see how a form, once you get it all set up with your property settings and your fields, you create a form, and then you can easily enter data into your table. If I open up my, um, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this database now, and I'm going to reopen the class database that I had opened earlier and open up the employees table. And so now this has data in it, so I kind of wanted to quickly just go through working in a table um, when you're setting it up. So you can see that you have your table, looks like an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you can use this button to add new records. You have a record navigation button down below where you can go from record to record. You can go to the very last record or the very first record with the arrow and the line. This one with the asterisk would add a new blank record. So if I wanted to add another record here, I could click on that. It would take me to the bottom. Uh, you can easily um, maneuver if you want to edit your records, you can do that. Uh, if you want to delete a record, you can select the whole row and hit the delete button. But be careful, if you delete a record in a table, it's permanent. You can't undo. So that's why you get the warning. Or if in a form, if you're in a form and you try to delete a record, then you would just, you know, you can't undo. So the thing about the undo button, it doesn't, it only works once most of the time in Access, and um, sometimes it doesn't work just because of because you're inputting data. The other thing, too, um, where it does work multiple times is when you're designing forms and reports. So that's just another feature that it does. Um, there's a search box down here below where you can type what you're searching for. Like if I type CA, it's going to find Carolina, but if I hit enter, it's going to find the CA in Chicago, and then it'll find California. As I keep hitting enter, it's searching for that. So, um, But if I was searching for, let's say, sales um, north, every time I hit net enter, it would go to sales north. And then when it got to the bottom of the database, it would stop. So that's a little search box that you can use. Um, that's at the bottom of the screen there. You still have find, so if you wanted to look for California by itself, just type in CA, look for the current document, so it looks at the whole table, make sure whole field, and then when you hit find next, it will find just California for you. Um, and then if you wanted to change something, if you wanted to replace, say, Orlando, um, with Tampa, then you could say, you know, replace all. It'll tell you it can't undo, but, you know, you can always redo the function. And then when you close out, you can see wherever it said um, Orlando, it replaced it with Tampa. So you have the, you know, find, replace, and your search box. You have a spell check, so you can spell check your table if you need to. Um, 
You can customize your table columns, so you know you can size them just like in Excel. You can double click on the line to the right of the column to size it or drag it, depending on what you want to do. You can see in the case where I have, um, you know, spaces in there, so you know I can size it. The thing though is, if you decide to size the row it sizes all the rows the same. So one of the things is even though it looks like um, Excel, it doesn't quite function like Excel. The other thing is if I you know, go in here now and I close this table, it's gonna tell me do I wanna save changes because I changed the size of the columns and the rows. If I hit yes, then um, when I open it back up, it has those changes. If I change the font or the color, it does the whole table. It doesn't allow you to just do a row or a record. Now if I close it and say don't save changes, then it's gonna, when I open it back up, it'll revert back to the way I had it. So even though it looks like Excel, you can print a table if you want. You can go to print and print it. But again, you've got certain um, restrictions as far as setting it up. So there's only so much you can do with it, though you could take it and export it to Excel, and then you know then you could work with it that way. Or later you could also print a report, which would make it look nicer. Now um, the other thing that I wanted to kind of cover real quick because I know we're getting towards the end here. Like I said, I know this kind of seems rushed, but I mean, there's so much to access, but I just kind of wanted for those of you that were going to get started with it. If you already have a table out there in Excel that you want to import into Access, or let's say that the data is coming from another database, so you exported it, you imported it into Excel, and now you want to take it from Excel into Access. What I would do with that is if, if it is, if you typed it from scratch, you don't have to worry about it. But if this came from some other program, I would click on the very last, the first empty column in your um, Excel spreadsheet, do control shift right arrow so that it highlights all the way, because now you have like 16,385 columns in Excel. And then I would go to the home ribbon and hit clear all. That, that would get rid of any hidden code that might have come over from the importing process. And then I would do the same with the rows. Click on the, the first blank row, do control shift down arrow because now you have like a million rows in a spreadsheet. And I would do clear all. And then that way, if there's any hidden code in your spreadsheet, it won't come over into your access table because you don't want it. It'll look ugly. It'll have all these empty fields in there. So I'm going to go to access. I'm going to go to the external data ribbon. I want to import my Excel um, table or data into a table in here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. I mean, it says, where is your spreadsheet, so I'm going to hit browse. Come on. And I'm going to select that spreadsheet I showed you. I'm going to import the data into the tape from the table in the current database. Now if you have multiple sheets, then you would do this for the first sheet. And then the second sheet, you could append it to, like if you have data on sheet two, you could append it um, to this. So I'm going to hit OK. There's my data on sheet one. I don't have anything on sheet two. Hit Next. There's, it's going to use my column fields as my labels or my fields. So I'm going to hit Next. I'm going to hit next. I don't want access to set the primary key. I already have a field that's going to be the key. Or you can say no key and set it later. So I'm going to hit next. I'm going to call it import table. And then if you want to save these for the next step, if you're going to do this over and over again, you can save this and hit close. Now when I open it up, it's right into Access. I can go into Design View, 
I can change the property settings. I can put an input mask in there and so forth. Now, if I go to the database tools and I go to relationships, you can see that I had created a relationship between these two um, tables, the customer table because of the drop down and the employee table. And if I double click on the relationship line, it has a basic relationship um, to it. But if you enforce referential integrity, what that does is it, it keeps the integrity of your database by um, not allowing people to delete information from the employee table or adding an employee in, in this one that doesn't exist here. And so, and then if you wanted to update, let's say you update an employee's name, they got married, you update their name, you can run an update query that would update all the other tables that would have that name in it, that field in it, or but you could still prohibit them from deleting the record. Like for instance, if you have um, a patient and a physician table. So you have a physician that worked on a patient, he goes to another hospital, but you want to keep the historical data that he was the physician for that patient. You don't want him to be deleted from that table ever. You would not check this. This way you're, you're protecting the integrity of your table by doing that. You don't have to enforce it. It's a good idea to do that, but um, you know, if you don't, you can still create a link between tables that way too. And then if I want to create links between other tables, I would add them to the relationship window. And as you can see, I have my keys here so that I can say, okay, um, let's see where I have other, so customer ID in product list. So I can take the customer ID field from here, drag it to here, hit create. Now I've got a link between these two tables. So by putting the keys, you know, like I said earlier, thinking about how you're going to put these in here. So now I've got employee ID as the, um, they, all, they call it a foreign key because if it's kind of foreign to this table, but it belongs to another, um, it's a key in another table. So if I click here and drag it to employee ID and hit create, or enforce your referential integrity. I could click here to customer and drag it to orders and hit create. You can see how I'm creating the links um, between these tables in the relationship window. So if you're not using the lookup to create the links, you know, a drop down, then you're going to have to manually create your relationships in the relationship window. So you're going to have to create the tables, set the key put the key as a foreign key in another table like I showed you earlier um, when we first started and then kind of set that up that way. And then when you're done, you just hit close and it would remember those relationships the next time you go back into your relationship window. Or if you create a new table, you just add it to the, the relationship window and then link it. And then like I said, you'll have direct links and indirect links um, working with Excel. And then the other thing too is when I double click on employees, you'll see these little pluses to the left of the table. That's a sub data sheet. So if I want to click on that and I say, oh, okay, you have to kind of know your data for this, but I want to see um, my customer information when I click on it. Since this is linked to customers, it'll tell you because when you click on it, you'll see it's not linked to this one, but it is linked to this one using the employee ID field. Then I can hit OK. And now every time I click on the plus, I'm going to get their customer information. In there, there's a plus that I know that I want to see their orders. So um, I can click on that and then it would bring up their orders when I click on the customer. I'm getting this because I changed a field name earlier and I forgot to fix that. But the other thing you can do is when you go to more, go to sub data sheet, hit remove, and then change it. So this time when I do this, I want to go to sub data sheet, sub data sheet, and I want to go directly to orders. I don't want like a third. I want to click on it and go directly to the orders table. So now when I click on it, 
there's the customer anyways, and there's what they ordered. So it's kind of like I didn't build a query for this yet, but it's a simple way of getting information directly from the table without having to build a query. And then the next um, session, we're going to talk quick talk about queries, how to create queries and build those and get the information that you want from your database. So the goal here is basically setting up your tables, putting in your fields, setting up your property settings, designing the database, and then getting the data in there. Because the purpose of a table is to hold the data and to store it. And then it's up to you then to extract that information um, later. So I hope this, this um, you know, was helpful to you. I hope you learned, you know, something from today's session. I see there were some questions that popped up, and I, I noticed Bob was answering them as we went along because I hadn't gotten to some stuff yet. So, Bob, for that. And um, if you have any more questions, but to, to end the session, because we're giving away um, office, the, the very last, I'm going to ask a question, and the first person to answer will get the free version of Office. Um, which is the most important field in a table? So what is the most important field in the table? If somebody puts it down, if somebody writes the answer down, because I can't hear you. Um, then we'll know who the first person to answer the question. Yes, Mark, you won. Mark Perkins won. Yay! Okay, so the key field, the primary key field, um, is the first is the is the main field in a table. So Bob will make sure you get that. So Bob will make sure that you get that um, office sent to you. He's typing. Bob is typing right now. Or Bob will keep it for himself. <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> All right. So if there aren't any more questions, again, remember this is going to be on YouTube. So if you want to go through it again so you can, um, you know, review it again at your own pace, you feel free. And that way um, you can kind of go through it uh, slower. And like I said, Access is kind of a complicated program. So if you need want more training or if you have a group of people that need some training or, you know, need some support, please let us know and we'll be glad to help. Thank you for participating in today's session, and we'll see you next month.